Okay, fifth graders, we're talking about adding fractions with unlike units, really unlike denominators. We can use the word units and denominators interchangeably. This is telling me I have two of that unit, which happen to be fourths. And this is telling me I have one of that unit, which happens to be halves. Units and denominators give us information about the value or amount uh, that we're working with. And what I see sometimes when kids are starting out with fractions and they are thinking that these are just numbers, so they're adding them just like they're plain old numbers, they might get the answer three, six. And we know that that's not correct, right? Because two of this unit plus one of a different unit is not going to equal three of another different unit. Let's take an example where we're using just plain old money and see the same concept, not in fractions, just in different units. Dollars come in different units. There's $1 bills, $10 bills, $100 bills. Those units are very different, right? It'd be very different to get $300 bills than it would to get three $1 bills. The unit matters. It gives us valuable information about how much we're working with. So think about that. If we have three $1 bills plus three $10 bills, what would be the answer? Six $11 bills? No. There's not even an $11 bill. Doesn't make any sense. Now, I know you probably already know the answer, $33, right? But let's think about what you did. What you did was you saw you had $1 and $10, and we decided, did this sort of instantaneously in your head probably, but you realized that three $10 bills is the same as 30 $1 bills. Guess what you did? You just made an equivalent expression or statement fraction, but it's an equivalent amount. You just convert it. So we didn't, we replaced $31 bills. We replaced the three $10 bills with $31 bills. And then we could add, we've got three $1 bills plus another $31 bills. And that's 33 $1 bills. So when you're adding fractions with different denominators, think of the denominators as the unit, right? And we want to have <clears throat> units that match because that makes it smooth sailing and it makes it understandable and logical. You've been doing this in your life, maybe not with fractions, but we have. Okay, so if we have a problem like this where we have unlike denominators, unlike units, and we're trying to connect them, right? Add them together. We're gonna have to make an equivalent fraction. So in this one, first of all, I'm gonna go ahead and write it vertically because I just like working with fractions that way because then I have a whole bunch of room over here if I need to make equivalent fractions because it takes some writing, right? <clears throat> I can see that I can probably, I can make a, a fraction that has four as a denominator fairly easy, easily. Two times two would get me the four. So if I also multiply one, the numerator by two, I'm gonna get two fourths. Now I have like units or like denominators. I almost don't need all this anymore, do I? I've made an equivalent for all of this. There's my work and there's my original fraction. And now smooth sailing, two fourths plus two fourths is four fourths, the unit fourths. Making an equivalent fraction, making sure the unit de denominator units match and just adding them up. So this is, you did a lot of that in fourth grade, actually, making equivalent fractions, adding, but we're taking it a step more, a step further in fifth grade. Three fifths, let's try this one, plus two fourths. And what I'm seeing here is that five times something or divided by something will never get me four and vice versa, right? Three times something will never get me two, two divide, they're just not, compatible in that way. They're not divisible. So I'm going to have to come up with a brand new denominator that matches or suits both of them. They can both be converted into that unit. And with a model, here's how we go. We first of all draw a model of this amount representing three-fifths. And my fraction is not going to be perfect. We know truly fractional parts are the exact same size, but I'm drawing a model not to get the answer, I'm drawing a model to visualize it and understand it, right? So it's a little off, but there are five sections and this fraction represents three of fifths, right? Plus two fourths. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw a model that represents this amount. Ooh, I'm gonna, actually, I'm gonna draw it 
horizontally. It just makes a little more clear to me the difference. Two, four. Okay, got it. Now, what I want to do is I'm trying to create a fraction that has the exact same denominator. So if I take these fifths, these are all fifths, right? If I take these fifths and make each of them four times more, have four times more of them, because I got the four from there, I'm going to take that fifth, that all of these fifths, and I'm going to make it not just one piece, but I'm going to make each one of those fifths four times larger than it was before. So now I have, what would I name, the, used to be named one fifth, now what would I name these pieces? One twentieth, right? Because there's 20 parts in the whole. Well, what am I gonna do to my two fourths here? I'm gonna take each of these fourths and make them five times greater or multiply them by five. One, two, three, four, and then I get that fifth one. So what is the denominator now? They were fourths, right? When there was just four big pieces, but now what would I call it? I was gonna name that, that one piece. What unit fraction would I have? I'd have one twentieth. So we found out that both of these fractions can multiply or get the common denominator of 20. And then I just have to see how many there are. Um, and I, we could count, there was four, eight, there was 12. And here there was five, 10. 10 20ths and 12 20ths. And if I had colored in the whole thing, it might be a little more clear, but I know you can handle it. Okay, so that's how you do it with a model. Now, if we were doing it with an equation and actually we used an equation to get from here to there, but let's see what it looks like. How, um, I'm gonna multiply four times something to get the common denominator. If I, again, I, I got this number up here, right? Four times five got me 20. So I have to also multiply the top number by that same or the numerator by that same fractional amount or same numerator, right? Five over five. And I'd get the same answer. And here five times what gets me 20? Well, I use the other denominator in the problem. And I multiplied five times four got me 20 and three times four got me 12. So they sort of take each other's um, denominator. You use the other one's denominator in the fraction that you're gonna multiply by. That's a mouthful, right? But take a look at that. We can see it with the model. We can do also do the same thing, make those conversions using an equation. Okay, let's try one more. And you'll have a lot more practice at this in um, today's lesson. Let's try two fifths and three eighths. Two fifths plus three eighths. I can't see an easy way to get fives to eighths or two to three. Like I can't find a, a one fraction that I could make it equivalent to and then have the units match. This is one where I'm gonna have to make two brand new, brand new fractions so that I can create fractions that have common denominators or common units or like units. All of those mean the same thing. So don't get confused by the vocabulary. I like to use rectangle models, two fifths. So I'm gonna get fifths, two of them, and then three eighths, one, two, three, five, six, seven, Ooh. three eighths, okay? Well, each of these eighths, there are eight parts and I wanna make them five times larger. That's where I got it. So I'm gonna take the eighths, I'm gonna make each of them five times larger. Now that one whole big strip that was an eighth now has one, two, three, four, five sections in it, creating a whole new denominator because the whole is divided into several more pieces. And so for these fifths, I want to make those eight times greater. That's multiplying by eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And now I have a new denominator, don't I? I have um, one, two, three, four, five, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Five times eight, what would that be? 40. So my new denominator is here, and this would be eight times five, which is also 40. So I have my new unit and they're common and they match and they're like, all of that means the same thing. And now I could count to find out how many of those 40 is, is the same as three eighths. But I could also use my um, multiplication or division, but in this case, multiplication, eight times what gets me 40. If I didn't already remember, it was that. 
I can use my common sense to figure it out. And then three times five would be 15. So there's 15 of those colored in. Remember, I'm not relying on that model. That model is just for me to think about it. That's why it's not perfect. Five times what amount gets me 40? Well, it was that eight, right? Five times eight gets me 40. So two times eight is gonna be 16. So if I counted those, it would be 16 of them. I don't need that anymore. Now, all my problem is, is 16 40ths plus 15 40ths. There's the bell. 31 40ths, just in time for the bell. All right, go ahead and try that today on your, um, your work.